what you have to learn yet. So this will be something that is going to happen into the class. Actually, we have like four main parts for what you have to learn. The first part will be this. Okay, we will start with the midterm project. Midterm project will be something that maybe you like, well, why I have to do this? I never done this I thing before. I have such a knowledge about it. But you got to do it. Because the first class I told you about what is the difference between education and learning, right? Did you get that concept? Learning can happen anywhere, anytime. You can start it from something very, very difficult or start it from the unknown area. Unlike the education that you have to start it as a the first step, second step, third step, something like that. Okay? So the midterm project will be something that you may never heard or never know about how to do it before. But anyway, you have to complete it and send the work to me, okay, before the midterm. And this will be the first one. I, I will tell you at the end of the class what would it be, but not now. You have to listen to the lecture first and we will talk about the midterm project later today, okay. The second story that you have to learn here, actually I show the image of the Steve Jobs, but I'm not going to talk about his, uh, his story. Actually, the things that I'm going to say is just like, guys, you've got to learn about people who have such a creative mind, and you have to take a look at their characteristics. Ah, yeah, Luma is a of people who have Isolated, if you can say that. The answer is no. No. Anything else? You want to guess? What would it be the characteristic of the person who have a lot of creative mind? Uh, you cannot say, you can say that, but it's not quite good. Actually, there are so many things, just like the first one, be brave. Be brave. Be brave. Second, take a risk. Be brave. Be brave. Anyway, this is the point that why you have to learn about the story of people. Because when you learn this kind of people's story, you're going to understand what kind of thing that they have in their mind as a common. Okay? So, actually, I'm not going to talking about Steve Jobs, it's going to be someone else, but anyway, it will be the topic of biography. And what about this image? Can you guess? Look like that. Sperm. Sperm. Oh, No, not this sperm. What else? Can you guess? Yes, I heard that someone say, no. Normal um, um, as a general who say, I um, mainly work in Russian Rui campus and um, I specialize on honeybees, working on the uh, research on honeybees. But anyway, honeybee is very close relative to ant, so I know a lot about ant, and that's why I got invited to, to share you all this knowledge. About the end. Okay. Um, just to. Oh God. Um, just to, to test your basic knowledge about living organism. Mm -hmm. Because you are an architect student, right? You are architect student. What is your um, opinion about biologies? You like to learn biologies? 
Yes. Wow. Yes. I met the baking soda. Yes. That's quite a surprise. Baking That's soda. quite a surprise. <laughs> okay. Um, um, so you know how many species of living organisms are estimated of the world? Mm -hmm. Seven what? Mm -hmm. It's 11 kingdom, 7 kingdom. Okay, I, I, I'm, I'm talking about number of species. Uh, you have any ideas? 10,000. I'm sorry for my slide. Actually, the picture is much more beautiful than this. Because this looks scary and this is not yeah. the end I'm trying to show you is much more beautiful with because of the um, we got some problem with servers so I don't know trying to fix it the picture will become um, much more better later okay we have got about okay on, on we become only plants and animals it will take about seven billion species seven billion species. We as a human, we have only one species, Homo sapiens. So you know that. And of that seven millions, the insect takes about five million species. If we count bacteria, fungi, fungi, you know fungi, head, head, yeah, bacteria or those proteins, Sacellial. Um, it can come up to 11 million species. So if we count the only insect, it's 5 million already. <laughs> that's look awful. I'm sorry, that's look awful. Um, yeah, and to give you the, the um, picture of the total biomass or numbers of insects, with that 5 million insect species, the ant, termites, bee, and was You know was was is called ant. Yeah, ant, termite, termite is um, blue work, no? Bee is, the, you know, leaf. And uh, was only this tree, this whole group, take about 75, 75, oh, it was come, great. 75% of the total insect biomass. So only four group is already 75%. And only one only one group they are itself. The biomass is as much as a human being combined. Do you know how much the world population of humans? How many? 70, 75, 77 million pounds. Yeah, so that is equal biomass to the ants. So now we're talking about ants. What we want to go to, to very detailed morphologies or characteristics, let's go into why the ants is important in the in the ecosystem, what is the, the, the benefit or what is the advantage or niche or whatever that the, the ant makes to the world? The first thing is that they are the very important seed disposal. Do you know why seed disposal is so important? Do you know seed disposal? No. That's very sincere. Okay, uh, so this also is made of, uh, sorry. So this also is a gradai, gradai medpupan. Why the, why the plant see this also is important? Because, um, so this also is being transport or movement of the seeds of the plant further away from the parent tree. The further that the seed can go far, that means the genetic diversity of the plants. Because if they, if they pollinate with their own offsprings, the plants will become inbreed. 
The in reasoning means the very close relative, which the, um, the, the bad gene will come up and it will become big and big for the genetic diversities. So that is not good. So the seed dispersal is very important for the primary producer or the tree or plants, which is very important. Everybody eats plants here. So it's, it's a startup of all the biomass of the world. So for the, the ants are, the ants are the very important seed dispersal. There's nearly one third of herbaceous plants, about 40% of the ground biomass is depend on the ant. This is another example, um, another benefit of ants. Ants, they are everywhere. Well, you can, you, you also can, can, um, can face some situation that you just put your sweet one minute in the table, and then one minute later, you find the ants. And different species of ants. So they are everywhere, especially underground. For example, here in the Amazon, you know Amazon, Amazon forest? Yeah. Yeah. Somebody says, right up there. Yes, right. I like this class, actually. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. In, okay, we, we talk about the true Amazon. The, um, rainforest in the South Africa, right? Okay. Um, in one kilo, uh, in one hectare of the underground soils, contain about eight million ants and one million termites in one hectare. So, what the what is the effect of the ant that they see under the ground? Because okay, this is another example. Let um let let go to the uh, the benefit later. Um, this is in Hokkaido in Japan. In Japan, in two point five square kilometers, it's composed of three hundred and six million workers in about a about a million queens living together in. 45,000 colonies of ants. They have the interconnected. So these 45,000 become a super, become a one super colony, and they stay under 2.57 square kilometers. But no, 2.7 square kilometers. What they do on the days? The ants are the very important soil premium chillers. The one who eats a small babies and try to make it smaller for the biotic, for the bacteria to decompose all these litter to become a element. And those elements will be transferred to the tropic level later. Okay? So they are a seed disposal, they are a soil premier tenors, and another, another important niche for ecosystem is that they are a very, very, um, very aggressive predators, or very important predator. Ants are very small, but they can hunt and they can hunt down very effective. They can kill the, even the small mammals like rat or squirrel just by the little one because they work together effectively, a thousand of them. So they are very good predators. So to eat others, why is it so important? Because it's made a tropic level to complete cycle. Oh well, this this is this is the beetle, right? This is the beetles, and this is beaver ant. But here is a leaf cutter, so they, they don't only eat an animal, but they also some of the ants uh, eat leaf. Yeah. 
You say you like biologies. So, have you ever heard of ten percent law? Have you ever heard ten percent law? Do you know ten percent law? Somebody say yes. What is the ten percent law? Share with friends. Put your hands up. Ten percent law. Do you know if you eat one kilo of food, it's only it's only hundred gram you can store in your body. That is ten percent law. It's the organic matter because ninety percent will be lost during transfer, during during incomplete digestion, during. Internal respiration, 90% will be lost. So you 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 will store only 10%. So if you if you store one kilo, that means you have to eat 10 kilograms of food. That's quite that's quite a lot, right? So the, yeah. So the ants is the important channelers of energies, which is they stay here in the tropic levels. In there about the second tropic level, the, the primary consume as the primary consumer. The first one will be the producer. In the trop, uh, yeah, in the terrestrial, terrestrial fauna, the primary consumer will be a plant. But if you in the sea, it might be a diatom or the protozoa. Here, the ant is here. Oh, sorry, the ant is here. Then it will become a rat, a frog, and finally. What's human? What's human? In the second, the third, the first, what's human? Human is up here. You eat up everything. See? But as a human, we can eat everything. We are dominates all the um, all the living organisms. But one uh, this habit of this is that the accumulation of the um, the toxic, the toxic compound, like like the uh, I the, like the iron, the accumulate of irons. If you eat fish here, the accumulate of iron will go to you. So if fish eat uh, be eaten by by some other fish, and you eat this fish, you you get double of the accumulate of irons. So finally, you get the whole toxic. In every topic level, so if you so try as much as possible eating the primary producer <laughs> because then you will yeah, to avoid to avoid those accumulation. Okay, just to just just to show you what is the relationship between. Um, insects, human, and other living organisms. Here is I'll just show you only one kingdom, the animal kingdom. So actually, we have five or seven, seven kingdom now. But we have plants, we have plants, we have fungi, we have protozoa, we have bacteria, and we have animals. Yeah. The bigger one is five. The other one is just something new, which is. Um, not so familiar to you, so I will talk about fine. So this one is the animal kingdom, and here is the most primitive one, the spawn. You know spawn? Spawn arm. Spawn is only one one group of animal which is linked in the single cell, the unicellular cell. Then it will become a multicellular cell, many cells together to be uh, to be for one living organisms. Here is jellyfish, megaphone. Then we go up to all these worms, rotifers, flatworm, nautilus, payat. Then um, we go to this clay. This clay will be the Invertebrate, so many and then vertebrate, yeah. 
But before we first went, we have a common ancestor. Um, our urban copper root is the starfish. So be, 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 before we have the, the um, we go to the core data, right? We go to the core data, we have the um, common ancestor being the starfish. So starfish is our close reality compared to other animals. Then we go to frog. Here we are here. Humans here. Frog, chordates, and primates. We are in the primates. And then when we look at the invertebrate one, this is a baby person. Invertebrate one, we will see the smallest, molluscic point, and squids. Squids are um, um, plumber. And then this annelid, second leaf. And then the last one is arthropod. Arthropod is. Um, yeah, arthropods, insect or ants sit in arthropods. When we look at in detail the arthropods, the see why in two folklore. The first one is arachnid. Arachnid is scorpion. Scorpion, they have eight legs and two parts of bodies. Then we have here what is that? Cassetia. Cassetia is a um, crab, um, prawn, all these prawn, crabs, and shrimp. Then we have millipedes. Millipedes is ginkgo. Do you know ginkgo? Yeah, millipedes is ginkgo, and then the insecta. Ants is here, it's insecta. Or malang. So when we look into the arthropods, and if you try to to um, distinguish between um, insects, omelette, and man, what is the difference between these two things? We will call them insects. You have to have three main body parts. The first part is head. Thorax, thorax is old, and abdomen is tall. If you don't have three main body parts, you cannot call yourself as insect or call any body. <laughs> this is more of a table. Okay, and then three main body parts, and then three pairs of legs. All these three pairs of legs because insect. So. Don't, don't call the one with four pairs of legs as an insect, no? And then two pairs of wings. Where is the wing of ant? Can you see it? Can you see the wings of ant? Arena? So we have far away on the back. Now, yeah, yes, the reproductive cats or ants have wings. So Nahia and male have wings. But the worker one or the one who work in the nest don't have wings. But uh, normally in the reproductive cats they have wings. So everybody in the insect have wings, two pairs of wings. What about fly? What about Malang one? How many pairs of wings they have? Somebody said two, you are very good. Yes, it's two. And uh, actually they have they have four. They have four wings, they have two pairs of wings, but other two is the great because they don't need it. So you, have, you can you can um, observe only two wings in fly. What is this? Of course, ant, right? You have three main body parts. What is this? Bees. Can you see this uh, three main missing body parts? Head, thorax, and abdomen. What about this? How many? How many body parts? Okay, first, what is this? Swine. Spider. They have two body parts. 
Hands and thorax fill together become one body part. We call separate thorax and then the abdomen, so they have only two, and they have <coughs> four pairs of legs. So this is man moving on spider. What about human? How many body parts we have? Somebody said two. I said three. No ill and food. I think we have three body parts. No, actually we have many body parts. We don't really um, have a distinct body part. Okay. Uh, for humans, oh no, sorry. For insects, they have the outer skeleton or exoskeleton. Exo means outer. Skeleton means uh, the things that support your body. So uh, exoskeleton, the thing that support your body, but is it outside. So exoskeleton. Um, exoskeleton can be um, can be calcium or can be other things, but for the insects is composed with chitin or we call cuticle. So if you see if you've got one insect you can you can touch it. It will um, um, you can feel the hardening of the exoskeleton. As I said, the insect has three main body parts, but uh, for the uh, ant, how can you distinguish between ants, wasps, and bees? What is different? What is the special characteristic or morphologies of the ant? So here, I uh, will show you that ants, actually they also have three main body parts, head, thorax, and abdomen. So they have three main body parts, um, three pairs of legs, but the first segment of abdomen and the last segment of thorax fills together. So these two fill together, become a right? become this. And then um, the first segment is um, fills and transform into a node. This node called petiole. Or and has this petiole, and no other insect have petiole. So if you want to see if they are ants or not, you see this petiole, this node. This node can be one, one node, or can be also two nodes, three nodes, it depends. Sometimes the shape of this node is different. So this is the paint. Um, ants had, like other insects, ants had the composed eyes. Composed eye, tarua. Composed eye composed with many lens, many lens in their eyes. And that lens received a visual for the ants. The visuals in the ant is focused for a movement and vibration. So they are very good in detect movement and vibration, but they are very bad in detect the um, um, what is that? Um, the clear picture, the the resolution. They are very bad in resolution. So if you try to maybe you you experience you're trying to hit a fly. Okay, a fly is everybody wants to hit fly. So this is a good example. So if you try to hit the fine, you rise your head. You have right your hands, flies already go because they will take a movement and all vibration in the air. They are very good in this. So it's almost no chance you will get them. But they, they don't really see you clear. For this solution, they are very bad. And here is the compound eye. They have two compound eye. And sometimes they has uh, ocelots, ocelot and otagio. This ocelot detect the um, light, light, light intensity or light levels. And they have two antennae, antennae like this. And the antennae of the ant is a elbow form. 
ข้อสอบ it is it's a ข้อสอบข้อสอบ shape like this so sometimes um, somebody draw the antennas of ant like like a flower like this so that's wrong in the um, in the in, in the basic morphology of ants it has to be elbow and they have a strong mandible here so mandible here and have that right the two mandibles the mandible um, is very important for ants um, the strong they have a very strong mandible sometimes they can carry the things that are much much bigger than their um, their own weight okay let's get a closer look here is again in the compound side you can see here the hexagonal the small hexagonal here is the lens and then here is the antennas again I will go into the antenna again later you will see here the one lens we call omatidiums see hexagonal here and then these omatidiums connected with the photoreceptor cell so when they got the photoreceptor it will uh, stimulate the photoreceptor cell and see how the picture like this in that small in that small uh, hexagonal when we look closer you can see the photoreceptor cell here this is one hexagonal and this legs legs or insects you can see it is composed with about six segments start with coxa this is quite short one and fat and then the trochanter is the connecting between femurs and the coxa and the tibia and tarsa and pretarsus at the tips of the legs you, uh, you will see claw like this here is the scanning electron pictures you see a many CT and then this is the eye the quadrisons sorry <laughs> Okay, as I say, the antennas of ants is the elbow form, or uh, um, the technical term we call geniculate. So it's go up like this and hook down like this or like this. If you look in the antennas, it's composed with many segments. Start with the anterior soft, uh, okay, start with softlet in the front of the um, head, and then we got the scale, the pedicels, and then the, a lot of pattern. So different and can have a, main, uh, a different numbers of pattern. So you can just count the number of segments in the antennae to distinguish between the different species of ants. Here is the life cycles. Life cycle of ants start from eggs. Of course, everybody starts from eggs. Will you start from eggs? Your life starts from eggs, right? Ants first. <laughs> yeah, ants start from eggs. Then the fertilized eggs become a larvae. Then, then through the fruki and become the adult. Become the adult. You, uh, this can be a queen or females, or this can be a working females. But for ants, it can also can start from eggs alone. And don't need, sometimes ants don't need sperm. To start from eggs alone with unfertilized eggs, it will, grow, uh, it will become a male. And then these two will be, the queen will fly, um, fly off the nest and try to mate with the several males. Then she get enough sperm. When she gets enough sperm, she go to the suitable place and find um, and, and start to lay eggs. When the first generation of worker uh, grow up, she stop to do the work and only lay eggs. Her offspring for the next generation will do all the work. 
and will generate the whole the whole colonies. As is eusocial insects. Eusocial means Sankum Human is eusocial, right? Human is also eusocial insect, or no, eusocial animals. We are Sankum we need social, we, we live together, we help each other, that is eusocial. So the um, definition of eusocial insect needs to compose with three components. The first one is that cooperative brood care. They have to help each other to look for brood. Brood means um, babies or offspring. They have to to look. Yeah, they have to help other to to look for brood. And other thing is the overlap of overlapping generations within the colonies. And then the division of labors into reproductive and non-reproductive blooms. That means they partition it, the task in the colony into a several, several tasks, and each of the group take care of one task. So they partition it their, their division of levels. In the colonies of the ants, the morphologies of ants um, or because they have a physical concept. That means if you look on the morphology, you can tell what is the duty they are. Normally, the ants, the part that changes on the head, um, with the bigger, disproportionate size of the head, um, depend on how big the, um, the mandible are. The bigger mandible, let's make the strong mandible, the stronger mandible. Stronger mandible means more effective to fly or to do a heavy job. So the the small one might, the small ant might, might uh, work with like cleaning or helping a brood or helping a baby or feeding a baby or whatever. But the bigger ones will do the front like like a soldier, so they defend themselves or they defend against the enemies. Those uh, case of the worker will do like this one. This one is queen without wings, and then queen with wings. So in one colonies of ant, you can see a different size of ant and different morphologies of ant. Because when you know all these basic knowledge, just want to, to show you a little bit about um, that and that you see in the picture or in the anime. It's not only one ant exit in the world. And have so many um, different, so many diversities in morphologies. This is also one genus of ant we call M. This one is also one and a very primitive one. You see here? The thorax is very similar to, to abdomen. This is the leaf cutter ant. Leaf cutter ant is also one ant. Uh, this is very, um, very uh, famous ant in the um, Amazon forest. Because this one is the one who eats all these leaves, and if if we do the agriculture, we plant some things. This ant can be a very harmful for for those field. So you can see here. Okay, here is the abdomen, and here is the petiole. See, they have a petiole um, with the spine, and they have a very big mandibles. It can cut your screen very easily. This is other one. This one I like very much. It's a very lovely one. This is also the yeah, end. They have a, a lot of nodes on the, on the uh, exoskeletons. 
Yeah, the formica. It's the one that you um, most familiar one. You um, the one that you use uh, a lot for it to be a, a signatures or or bar mode is this one because the proportion of the body is very beautiful. Look at this. He has hair and the antennae, the thorax, and the antenna, it's very beautiful. So many people use this as a symbol of mod or symbol of ants, but actually we have a lot of different ants. Okay, here's another leaf cutter ant. This is the big, the bigger one, big, bigger than, than, than this, this one. This one is quite primitive, quite, quite gap, quite out gap. But this one, is the one that's very common. You can find it everywhere in in um in Africa or in America, in South America. This leaf cutting ant, they 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 use leaf to to farm the fungi. I will I will talk about this later. But you can see here is the leaf. And what colony they have? Okay, this is the size of humans. And this is a colony of the acta or leaf cutting ants. You could say it's like a, it's a huge, huge net. It's composed with many millions, several millions ants in the one colony. Here is the star. You could see that. What is it? You see here the mandibles. The, um, the, the shape of metal is transformed from normal ants to be longer and sharper. So uh, it's, it's very sharp. It's, it's like a knife. I got cut once and it's painful. It's very painful. <laughs> and um, um, some ants have, oh no, um, all the ants have these uh, formic acids. Do you know formic acids? Um, but, but when you, when you got bite by ants, you will smell some um, some odor like a uh, uh, real yeah, like a vinegar, like a vinegar. So um, that is the formic acid. So when the ant cut cut our skins or cut cut the um, the enemies, then they will put this um, formic acid into the wound. So imagine that you got a wound and you put a vinegar into your wound. So it's double painful. Um, ants always do this. This one also. This is another one. The um, do you know this one? You know this one? You familiar to this one? But then weaver ant. Why they call weaver? Why they call weaver? Do you know what does weaver mean? Weaver mean tall. You will be tap for things now. So um, um, I have got another video to show you why it's called Weaver. This is also very impressive, but this is my favorite one. Another my favorite one. Um, I do a bit PhD thesis with this with this ant. Uh, I have very low IT skill. Sorry. <laughs> Um, this one then, but um, the same species that we found, uh, we also found in Africa. Uh, it will be a green ant, this we call a red ant, what then? In Africa, exactly the same species, but it's, it has uh, body colors, green, so they call green ant, so a similar one. We, they have only two species of the world, but um, one place of big ants can contain uh, more than a million ants. So, if you um, if if you have experience to see a mess of events in your garden or in your plantation, you can see uh, these 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 nests in many of of the tree, it's in the canopy of the tree, and many nests in one tree. So, um, for one colony of events, you can take. About, it's going to contain about a hundred nests like this, connect together. And in these hundred nests, you can find only one queen. So to look for a queen of vivian is almost impossible. Have you ever been by, by 
Have you been visited by, by, by the river ant? Who got the experience? You are very city girls or city boy. You never experience anything like this. You have to go out a little bit. I've got a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, another one is is the ants and fungus relationship. This relationship is very um, is, is, is very um, interesting because. Do you remember in the video, the video of the river ant before you see the caterpillar? The caterpillar is the larvae of, of pisea. This caterpillar will become a pisea later, a butterfly later. And that caterpillar, normally ants will eat all caterpillar in the world. They will eat all because they are, um, you know, they are predators. But these kind of caterpillar, uh, if evolved a behavior, evolved a core evolution to produce a nectar. So um, ants will protect this caterpillar just for collect the nectar from this caterpillar. Because even when um, they use uh, ants use the antennae to trigger on the caterpillar, the caterpillar will produce a drop of, of nectar for the ants. So. Um, and has this kind of relationship with other animals too. Like this one is fung fungus or fungi, hit brown. Ants will, will collect the leaf from plants. They will get from special plants. Not all plants they will use. They will get only a special one. And then they will um, farm it farm of fungus and they will use the um, fiber of fungus to feed their larvae so they eat this fungus so the first architecture of um, agriculture <laughs> the first agriculture in the world is for ants to do the lucas et gum the first animal who do lucas et gum is not human it's ants they do the um, fungus farming already many years ago. Another interesting thing, just want to show you the ant mimicries. And I say ants is very, very effective predatory. So everybody is scared of ants. Everybody is scared of ants. So um, this one. Do you know what is this one? This one is the spider. But the spider evolved themselves to look like a real ant. So this is the true view, the real view ant. This is the, the fake view ant. So they look very similar. See, so Others predator will not get close to this spider because they look like a big ant. So this is a kind of mimicry. Yeah, before we, um, what is the time? How much time I left? 